Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's review video about the HJC Arfa 71 helmet. This helmet's here to replace the very popular R470 in HJC's range. This is the R471, and I've spent a couple of hundred miles riding in one so I can run through what it is and how I found it out on the roads. The shell for this helmet is made from PIM Evo, which is an update of the composite of fibers that HJC have used in their previous R4 helmets. The fibers are applied differently, they're in different positions, and HJC have also added natural linen into the mix, which they say improves resistance to shock. That's helped with meeting the new safety standard, ECE 2206, but I'll come back to that a bit later on. I can't say whether the shell itself is heavier than the old helmet's shell, but the helmet as a whole does weigh more than the R470. This size medium R471 weighs 1653 grams on our scales, and that's about 170 grams more than the previous helmet. It does feel a more substantial and also reassuring helmet than the R470, and I didn't actually find the weight to be a problem at all when I wore this helmet. Anyway, let's move on to ventilation. Venting up top comes from this large sliding shutter. When it's closed, air can still flow through it and exit immediately behind just here, which HJC say makes it quieter than if air has to flow over the closed vent. It's only when you slide this vent back that air can get inside the helmet through the three holes that are exposed when you do that. Channels in the EPS impact liner then let that air flow to the back of the helmet where there are four holes leading to these exhaust vents. Down below, there's a single chin vent that scoops air through the top of the chin bar and out into the eye port. It's got two positions, so you can have down or down and out to scoop in some more air. I wore this helmet in February. It was pretty cold outside, and that's really good time to test vents as cold air is much more noticeable when it flows into the helmet. The top vent especially brought through lots of air on my Yamaha FZ1 phaser, and the chin vent was also effective. Now, the screen on my phaser does tend to deflect the airflow over the top of most chin vents, so I'd expect that to be even more effective if you've got a naked bike. As a combination, I'd say the venting on this helmet is among the most noticeable setups I've tried over the years. The visor's all new, it's an HJ40, and it goes back to having the lifting tab to one side rather than in the middle like it was on previous R for helmets. That central tab could be a bit fiddly and also susceptible to braking. We know that there's less risk of breakage with this one. From fully open, the visor drops in six steps before the seventh puts it in the cracked position and then the eighth clicks it shut against the seal. My issue with the visor is the lock. On this helmet, I found it would often click before it was fully locked and it takes a very firm press from the top of the visor to get that complete lock. And then once you've got that, you need to get your thumb under the visor to release it which really I didn't find easy with gloves on. Now, I don't usually ride with the visor locked shut, so it didn't cause me any real dramas, but if you're someone who does ride with it locked shut, then it's worth considering that locking and unlocking this visor while on the move is likely to be troublesome. It mounts to the lid with a new method for HJC, which is simple and intuitive for changes, and it's ready for a pinlock insert. The insert comes in the box, and it's a pinlock 120, which is their highest grade of insert for fog protection. It's supported by an internal sun visor as well, which has a clever new operating mechanism that lets you adjust the amount of drop. As standard, it drops down in a really straightforward way with this slider on the left rim. And in standard trim, the travel of that slider is limited. If you want extra drop, you can release that limit in two stages. The switch lives behind this cover here. So if you slide this off, you'll be able to see a limit switch. Push it up one stage and the sun visor will come down a little bit further inside the helmet and it'll also push out towards the front of the lid. If you push it up to the next stage, the visor comes down further again and a little bit further still towards the front of the chin bar. The main reason people don't like too much drop on a sun visor is that it can sit too close to their face. So by sliding away from your face, it reduces that risk. Even with the standard drop, I found the sun visor had a very good level of glare protection when I wore this helmet. And when you adjust it to give full drop, it pretty much fills the eye port. So it gives almost as much coverage as wearing a dark outer visor. And I had no problems with it touching my nose either. Sun visor is also anti-fog coated, which is really handy when you're riding in February when there's plenty of moisture in the air. This has to be about the best internal sun visor I've worn for giving good clarity, good coverage, and also being easy to operate. Right, let's move to the inside. The R for 71's lining is fully removable, and I'd say this is an upgrade on the previous R for 70. There's more of this lightweight material here, but still plenty of brushed fabric for comfort next to the skin, which is especially handy when it's sliding over your face when you're putting the lid on and taking it off. The old helmet had no foam in the top part of each cheek pad though, and that gave room for spectacle arms. That's not the case on this lid, there's foam in the top there. 
Now, one of our team at the Milton Keynes store tried this with his glasses on. He said it was fine. He said it was no different to the Alpha 70 he wears at the moment. I don't need to wear my glasses for riding, but I tried them in this lid anyway, and the arms didn't really sit how I'd like them to. So if you wear specs, I'd try them in the lid before making a final decision. Now, the cheek pads do have emergency release tabs just here, so these pads can be taken out while you're still wearing the lid. That's something that I hope you'll never need, but it does make it easier to remove a helmet after an accident. There are recesses inside the helmet for intercom speakers and they're quite generously sized. I could get a pair of 40 millimeter Cardo speakers in there with no problem at all. There's a bit more intercom info to go into, but before I do that, let's just point out that the fastener strap's done up with a pair of D-rings. Okay, so the intercom. The R 71 is prepared for a pair of new smart HJC intercoms, the 21B and the 50B. Both are made by Senna for HJC. The battery will go in this hatch by the neck and then there are spaces for control modules to attach to either side of the helmet. 21B is a Bluetooth unit with a single control module that attaches to the left of the helmet and the 50B runs mesh and that's got two modules, one attaching to each side of the helmet. Attaching intercoms to these sections is new for HJC and I think it will make it difficult to fit a universal intercom. There's not much room for a clamp to slide between the shell and the impact liner and then if you add in these contours on the shell and even on the covers just here it's going to make it difficult to stick something down with a self-adhesive pad. I'm sure there will be people who graft a unit on here and will be happy with it, but I'll admit I didn't even try as I can't really see a sensible way of getting it on there. If you want comms, if you don't mind buying a new kit and you're happy with Senna technology, then I'm sure these units will work very well. If you've already got a setup you're happy with, or if you prefer Cardo's technology, then that new integration is probably not such good news. Okay, so overall I found this helmet to be a decent step on from the R470. It feels more robust and tougher, the visor is less fiddly and it gives good peripheral vision possibly tipped a little more towards touring than sports now but it still has d-rings to do up the strap which is more of a sporty style it's still comfortable and i found the ventilation to be excellent on my bike and the visor as i said the sun visor is probably the best i've experienced yet right last things last prices sizing and approvals as we record this plain colors like this have a list price of 399.99 and the graphic options are 449.99 the r 71 is approved to ece 2206 for use on the road it's the most recent standard and i think it gives added confidence in the safety performance over and above the r 70. the r 70 scored three stars in the sharp test and that was a problem for some people it's still going to be a good while before we see a sharp rating for this helmet as actually quite a convoluted process the thing is, many of the factors that make Sharp a tough standard are also in the new 2206 test, so I'd expect this helmet to do better when the Sharp test is eventually revealed. The helmet's also ACU Gold approved, so you can wear it on track if you want. As for sizing, the R 71 comes in sizes from extra small up to double extra large. There are four shell sizes to cover that size range. The smallest shell covers lid sizes extra small and small. Medium gets a shell to itself. So does large, and then the biggest shell covers XL and double XL. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the HJC R for 71 helmet. But if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.